This is your season of grace with your host, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. I want to share with you today about the gift of victory. Tell somebody the gift of victory. I didn't hear you say the gift of victory. I still cannot hear you well. Say the gift of victory. Victory is a gift. These are days of victory. But victory is a gift. Victory is triumph. Being over. Rising above. Prevailing. That's victory. Prevailing. Standing. Rising above. Overcoming. Overpowering. Resilience. Coming back. That's victory. Breaking forth. A missed opposition. That's victory. The scripture lets me know that victory is a gift. But before we talk about victory as a gift, victory belongs to God. A glory to God. It's a glory to God. Hallelujah. Victory belongs to God. Job chapter 12 verse 16. To him belongs strength and victory. Both deceived and deceiver are his. <laughs> But those who deceive people and those who are deceived, he has control over both. Which means he can stop a deceiver and he can help the one that has been deceived. <laughs> Belongs to him. Victory. He can tell the one who intends to deceive, deceive no more and deception stops. And he can reach out to the one that has been deceived. Take my hand and leave. And the one that has been deceived, that died, comes back in victory. The scripture says, victory. To him belongs strength. To him belongs strength. And victory. Power. Victory belongs to him. Both deceived and deceiver. His own. He's almighty. Hmm. The greatest passion I want to have in this life is God. I want God. The only addiction I want in life is God. Whew. If you have God, you are not far from victory. You have victory. If you don't use it, it's your fault. If victory belongs to God and you have God, then victory is your own. If you hear me say correct. So when the scripture says, to him belongs strength, what have you been doing and you don't have strength? To your God, your father belongs strength and you're walking around like a worm, begging witches for permission to live for another day. Go punish weakness. To him belongs strength and victory. That means you have victory. You have victory. Except this word is not correct. To him belongs strength and victory. Both deceived, those who like to deceive, and those who have been deceived. Ah, deceived and deceiver. They are in his hand. He can turn things around. He will turn things around for somebody. So victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. I think there is a re-echoing of this in the book of Revelation. In the heavenly liturgy, liturgia, in the heavenly worship. 
a refrain that constantly echoes in the hall of heaven chapter 5 verse 13 so then i heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth revelation chapter 5 then i heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever libro listen the libra revelation chapter 7 verse 9 uh, after this i looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation tribe people and language standing before the throne and in front of the lamb they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands and they cried out in a loud voice salvation belongs to our god who sits on the throne and to the lamb all the angels were standing around the throne who were, who were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped god saying amen praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength glory to god mm. power and strength belongs to him to him belongs strength strength brings about victory when you have strength victory is guaranteed glory to god if you don't know god you have a fundamental problem you are not permitted to succeed in life without god license is withheld from you you know god does not matter where you come from you have been licensed to win and to 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 triumph and prevail you are not weak i say you are no weak you are not you have strength except you don't have god if you say ah, where did you get strength from i met a priest friend of mine after i resigned a close friend in abuja he said nah where you get that kind of liver what do you mean i say you eat communion every day which you they take communion do all the strength you get from communion what are you doing with it just they eat holy food and walk around empty do something do something with power you people carry excess grace and you do nothing with it you run away from witches and wizards experiment do experiment <laughs> Put your power to work. It will not let you down. Power belongs to God. Glory to God. Because victory belongs to him. It is his prerogative to give victory. And the fact that strength belongs to him and victory belongs to him means the devil does not have strength. by implication satan does not have strength and does not have victory which means when you are facing the devil you are on the side of victory and strength and the devil is on the loser side by default before the fight begins it is already known who is victorious which means whatever you are facing right now and the devil is involved you are already on the side of victory and power and strength the devil knows he's a loser it's just that he, de he deceives you to think that he's the one who has strength the devil loves to do gra gra if the scripture said to him belongs strength and victory and he's the only God he does not share his status with another one and there is no other God that sits in another heaven that is like him therefore the devil does not have strength does not have victory from today you win stand up in that case with the devil you are victorious in the name of jesus how do i know to him belong strength let's read it together to him belong strength and victory both deceived and deceiver shout hallelujah victory is a gift be seated 
Deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 2 to 4. When you are about to go into a battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. This is what God taught the people of Israel. The people told you don't pay tithe. It's Old Testament. There is something wrong with their sense of understanding. This is Old Testament though. Old Testament gives you biblical revelational principle about every aspect of life. Tithe does not take you to heaven. It is a principle of prosperity on earth. Paying tithe doesn't make you a holy man. Not paying, it doesn't make you a sinner. It is a principle that God gave to his people. If you go to Amok, if you go to Ogboni, they have principles for finance. Somebody who is in a satanic cult, if he gives you any one cover, he, needs, he wants your soul for the devil. That's why you can see brothers, they are so wealthy, but others are suffering in terrible poverty. Why? They are not permitted to raise another man, except you belong to that cult of death. It's a principle. <laughs> so, this is God giving a principle of battle. He's giving a mindset. He said, the priest why the priest he is the one who has the divine connection is to is the one at that point the priest prayed, played also a prophetic role of speaking for god and from god he shall come forward and address the army he shall say here oh israel today you are going into battle against your enemies do not be faint hearted or afraid do not be terrified or give way to panic before them for the Lord your God is the one who, give, who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory he fights on your behalf against your enemy to do what? To give you victory. You can only give what you have. God gives victory because victory belongs to him. The principle of warfare. This is the spiritual warfare principle. Which means no matter what you go through, how many occult men or women, how many satanic manipulators you are facing in the office? No, don't fight from their level. Fight from God's level. And God's level tells you, Revelation says, God is the one who goes ahead of you to do what? To fight against your enemy so that he can do what? Give you victory. Stand up, lift up your hands, say, I have, I have victory. Every child of God here, I announce to you that that thing you are fighting is God's battle. It will fight for you. I pray in the name of Jesus, let revelation hit you and reposition you. I prophesy to that office, to the seat. I prophesy to the table. I prophesy to who sits on the table that keeps you in bondage. It is over. It is over. It is over. In the name of Jesus. Be seated. Wow. It fights against your enemies. That's why I say if you don't know God, you, are, you have a fundamental problem. Your life is fundamentally flawed. Your, your life is incapable of sustaining divine help. So a lot of people pray they cannot be helped 
because they don't have the foundation that can support the help. Am I talking to somebody? Not everybody is qualified to receive from God at a serious level. Because you need God as your foundation to receive from God. So knowing God is a fundamental thing. If you don't know him, take a decision. Surrender. Let no devil lie to you that it is better not to know God. It's a lie. The greatest advantage is in knowing God. Look at how God is telling his people. God is the, the one who fights for his people. Both in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, forever, God fights for his people. For his people. Look at Psalm 44, verse 3. Psalm 44, verse 3. It was not by their sword that they won the land. He's talking about Israel. How they took possession of Canaan. He said it was not by their sword. God told them, fight to. But the point is that God was the one who went ahead. Every time they disobeyed God, they were defeated. God, by disobedience, you are broken from your source. Dark moment. Helpless, hopeless, bleak moment. When you know you are living in disobedience. The greatest time of strength and comfort and confidence is when I know I am living in obedience. Confidence, boldness, courage, peace in my heart. Fear nothing. When you know you are right with your maker, nothing can do you well. If it does well, you stand up and do well, 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 well three times. If you understand me, lift up your hands, shout. Ah! That's true. If you are in God and God is in you, something does where you wake up. Where, 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 where? Why? Strength belongs to him. He said, it was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It is not your arm that brings you victory. By strength shall no man prevail. It was your right hand. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you love them. You love them. So victory belongs to those that God loves. Verses 5, 6 and 7 of that Psalm 44. It said, through you, we push back our enemies. Through you, <laughs> we push back. It means in you, we push back. With you, we push back. Because of you, we push back. Because of the advantage we have in you, we push back. Through your name, we trample our foes. That's victory. We trample through your name. Just because I've given you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome not some of the power, not many of the power, it's all the powers of the enemy. He said, I do not trust in my bow. That's what I tell God. He said, I don't trust my fasting. I don't trust my prayer. I don't trust me. I trust God. That's my prayer. Because sometimes the enemy may, may make you trust your power. It be, that is spiritual pride. Spiritual pride is when we you begin to trust your holiness. It is not your holiness that saves you. Your holiness is a response to the salvation of God. It's a product It is not your fasting that saves you. It's an expression of your dependence. Fasting is an expression of your dependence. It's not what gives you victory. He said, I do not trust in my bow. I do not trust in my sword. 
My sword does not bring me victory. My sword, my knowledge, my, my relationship, my connection. Cult, secret cult, is a, is a negation of this word. To tell you, your cult connection is what will give you victory. And many people are beginning to run church like cult. Making you feel if you come to this church, you have advantage. Not advantage in God because of connection. Be careful, though. Be very, very careful. Because there is a subtle way to replace God with structure. When we talk about Antichrist, it's deep. Oh. Antichrist may not appear like a monster. Oh. Antichrist is anything that is in the place of Christ. The word anti in Greek means instead of. In the place of. So when there is a tendency in church not for Christ in himself, but now it becomes like the connection, the name that opened doors for you. Now, <laughs> the head is cut off, the body is useless. Be careful. Say, I hear you. Be careful, oh. Deception, the principle of deception. This, the society, now more than ever, deception is in the air. It is big in church, in government, in politics, in finance. Everywhere you turn to, there is deception. It takes discerning personality, discerning spirit, not to fall into the error. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory. Look at this, verse 6. Say, like, I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. You, but you give us. You give us. It's a gift. If it is a gift for you, say, I receive it. Every believer in Christ, victory is a gift. You know what gift is? You don't even work for it. It is just given to you. You don't even need to pray for victory. You already have victory. You need to exercise your victory. Victory belongs to you. If he does not give it to you, take it. <laughs> take it. It belongs to you. Exercise it. In the name of Jesus. There are certain things you don't need to worry too much. You already stand in the name of Jesus. You devil, I'm not going to fast. I bind you. Because it's like, the impression is that before you have victory, when the devil is troubling you, you go and hide somewhere and fast for seven days before you come. Are you the devil? Where are you now? I have fasted for seven days. You wake up at midnight, you ate very well and you lay down and the devil comes to do where? You stand up. Where, 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 where are you? Bind the devil. You don't need to pray. That means you take victory. Did you hear me? You don't ask for victory. You already have it. So you do what? Take victory. And use it. Stand up and lift up your two hands. Say, I take victory. And I use victory. No, speak it out. I say, I take victory. And I use victory. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. First Corinth chapter 15. First Corinth chapter 15 from verse 54. When the perishable has been closed up with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Paul was referring here to the, the last thing, the perusia, the eschatological, the end, when there will be transformation either by the rapture or by the last coming of the Christ. And then the mortal body will fade away and we will receive the immortality of the heavenly body. But then that principle works even now. It is only... It's not only at the end that death has been swallowed up in victory. When he died, I told you that he took death and swallowed. 
And the whole world was waiting. He said, nobody has ever tried this and lived. Oh, and people were watching. He swallowed death. And his tummy did not churn. He was not churning. He was not moving. And people watched. He lay down. On the third day, he woke up. And death died. That is what the scripture refers to. Death being swallowed up. Victory. To swallow something means you are bigger than that thing. You cannot swallow what is bigger than you. He swallowed, swallowed death and he remained victorious. Mean death don't die. The death has been swallowed up. Your sickness has been swallowed up in victory. Your poverty and shame has been swallowed up in victory. Your disgrace and your tears have been swallowed up in your victory. Ah, marine spirits, spirit husbands and spirit wives have been swallowed up in victory. Whatever harassment of ancestral spirit have been swallowed up in victory. Whatever waste children of a family, whatever delays families, whatever delays marriages, whatever waste, whatever destroys ministries has been swallowed up in victory. And there is a mockery here. Verse 55 is a mockery. Look at verse 55. He said, where, oh death, is your victory? Look at you, death, mumu. Where, oh death, is your victory? Where, oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, you see? Which means if you are connected to, the, the, to sin here, you will carry death, you go die. You have to renounce it. As I'm speaking now, you are repenting of sin. You are, you are crossing from the realm of death into life. By repenting from sin and accepting Jesus as Lord. He said that the sting of death is, is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. You can see that Jesus Christ is God's victory. Victory over sin. Victory over Satan, devil, Lucifer. The marine, the ancestral, the, the witches and the wizard, sin evil. You don't finish. What is remaining? Nothing. Stand up. Nothing. Tell somebody nothing. It is finished. He said, but thanks be to God. Be when he rose, heaven was saying, thanks be to God. When he rose, the same sang, thanks be to God. When he, when he rose, those who were sick, they sang, thanks be to God. The weak, they were singing. You know why? Do you know why we sing in Grace Family? Some people said they spend too much time worshipping from 5 p.m. to 7. Why? The sick, they are singing, thanks be to God, who has given us victory. Our worship is in acknowledgement that we are not looking for victory. We already have victory. You know, some people, they go to church from the A to Z, they begin to buy. We bind you, we cast you, we bind. No, do you really hear us buying cast? You know, we worship, we sing because we are not looking for victory. We already have victory. We are not searching for victory. We already have victory. And so, when the week comes, they can say, now I have strength. Thanks be to God who has given us victory. The sick will sing, I have health. Thanks be to God. Now you can begin to sing your song. You can, to, can begin to prophesy your prophecy. Thanks be to God, I have children. Thanks be to God, I have been delivered. Thanks be to God, I have been rescued. Thanks be to God, I have been restored. Thanks be to God, is somebody singing a song of victory? Is it, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory. Thanks be to God, the sick can now say, thanks be to God. The weak can now say, thanks be to God. The barren can now say, thanks be to God. The rejected can now say, thanks be to God. The lonely can say, thanks be to God. The forsaken can say, thanks be to God. The hopeless can say, thanks be to God. Who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ? Mm, do what only you can do. Father, your come and take your everywhere. 
if you are still under the grip of sin everywhere here if jesus is not yet known in your spirit if he's not a ruler you can now join the song of victory accept him as your lord and savior and then victory will be yours bow to him repent of sin he will forgive you he will never remember your sin he would take them and put them in the bottom of the ocean nothing no devil will remind him that he has forgiven you he's already dead he's gone when he died your sin died your punishment died your poverty died your sickness died your blackmail died guilt died shame died tears died when he rose your life rose your joy rose your victory rose your song was given in christ you have been transformed for there is now therefore no condemnation won't you embrace him just embrace him and leave you are forgiven already you are forgiven and if you know him proclaim your victory say thanks be to god i have overcome this situation thanks be to god i cannot die early thanks be to god the family issue cannot bury me thanks be to god i will live and fulfill my destiny thanks be to god is somebody speaking this is your season this is your time you can speak out of that trouble you can speak out of that issue thanks be to god i am already healed thanks be to god i'm already delivered thanks be to god I'm already changed. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a Covenant Partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank. Zenith Bank. Account name. Grace Family Global Outreach Account Number 101-42-978-63 For inquiries, please call 081-804-33-225 or 090-738-48742 To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.